So uh, the purpose of this little demo is to talk a little bit about um, how to get started on the what time is it exercise. Uh, the purpose of the exercise is to practice the two things, writing class level methods, and, and when I say methods, I also mean procedures. So writing class level procedures and uh, using class properties. Just a really quick recap. The, the difference between a procedure that you write on the scene and a procedure that you write as a class level procedure. Um, basically, a class level procedure is usually written when you're adding an ability that only involves the object, or the, pardon me, the class that it's written on. So these class level procedures, moving the minute hand and then moving the hour hand, it just involves moving parts of the clock. So we just make it as a class level procedure on the clock. We could have written those procedures on the scene, but that doesn't make a lot of sense because we're manipulating parts of the clock. So instead, we'll write it on the clock class. Okay? All right. So with that part out of the way, uh, level two asked you to write four procedures. Minute hand, move hour. Minute hand, move minute. And then hour hand, move an hour. And hour hand, move a minute. What I mean by move hour and move minute is I mean if an hour elapsed, how far would the minute hand move around the clock? And I know how far would a minute hand move around a clock if an hour elapses. Right, like if it's 12.10 p.m., the minute hand would be at the 2. And at 1.10 p.m., the minute hands are going to have moved around the clock a whole revolution, so it'll still be at the 2. So I've got some code. I've disabled the last part here, but this is going to move the minute hand an hour on the clock. This is going to move the minute hand a minute on the clock. And then we've got the hour hand moving an hour on the clock. So let's run the program and then let's break down the code and see how it works. This is just for demo purposes and you would erase these procedures later on when you're writing the rest of the program. Okay, so you, you should have seen the minute hand move around the clock. Might be a little laggy. The minute hands just moved just a little bit. And we just saw the hour hand move one hour on the clock. So that's what I intended those three procedures to do. Everybody's understanding what I'm wanting those procedures to do? Okay. Uh, let's look at what's in the minute hand move hour. I made a variable and I didn't really need to in this procedure, but I think it makes the code more readable. So I, that's actually a good reason to, to put a variable in sometimes. just helps make the code more understandable. So I dragged out the local tile. You drag and drop it, and that's what allows you to create a variable. I created a variable of type real number, and I called it how much of a complete revolution. And I just set it to 1. And then I'm just passing this variable in here. And I could have just put 1 as the argument and not used a variable. But I did it because it still makes the code a little bit more readable. When the minute hand's moving an hour, it's going to move a full revolution around. So it's rolling left 1.0, as in one full revolution. It's really important that everybody understands that that's what's happening. That's what you see at the start of the program here. The minute hand's going to move one hour on the clock. Well, what you just saw right there, where it moved all the way around the clock, that was one full revolution. So everybody's OK with that, right? So at all of the other procedures, the thinking behind how to write them comes out of understanding the idea of how much of a revolution around the clock do we want the hands to move. So in minute hand move minute, we want to move the hand a certain revolution around the clock. Well, if it goes all the way around the clock, one full revolution in an hour, how far should it go around if a minute passes? Are there any thoughts? Anybody have any ideas? How far should the hand move on the clock uh, in terms of revolutions? What do we think? Anil? One sixtieth of a revolution. Anil says one sixtieth of a revolution. Uh, and why are you saying that, Anil? And Anil said because there's 60 minutes in an hour. Yeah. So if it's going to move a minute on the clock, it's one sixtieth of a full revolution. And so that's what I have in my code. I've, again, I've got the same variable inside this procedure called how much of a complete revolution. And I took one full revolution and divided it by 60 using the math functionality. 
And then I've dragged that variable into a roll left using the minute hand part. And so that's why when I run the program, so first it moves an hour, and then the minute hand's going to move 1 60th of a complete revolution. And that's why it only moved just a little bit. So is everybody kind of okay with that? Yeah. All right, so let me ask you this then. And you can rewatch the video. You can ask me more questions. This isn't, you know, the be all and end all, but this video might help a little bit. If we're going to move the hour hand an hour on the clock, again, it's all about revolutions on the clock. How far around the clock do you think the hour hand needs to move if an hour is going to pass? I'll let everybody think about that for a sec. How far does the hour hand move on the face of the clock when an hour's passed? In terms of, of complete revolution, Adila? No, that would be 12 hours, right? If it moved all the way around the clock, 12 hours had passed, but I've kind of given it away by saying that, Harjan? Uh, what do you think, Nitesh? Why do you say that? In a full revolution of the clock for the hour hand, right? So, yeah, like 1 12th of a revolution because... You know, you divide a full revolution by there's 12 hours in a full revolution of a clock. Okay, yeah, so uh, that's what's in this procedure. It rolls left 1 12th of a complete revolution. Okay, I'm going to actually leave it at that. I'm not going to show you what's inside my hour hand move a minute procedure. I'll let you think about it. But I will enable some of these tiles. And I'm going to disable these other tiles. And this is really subtle. Sure wish there was a way to disable something multiple times. But anyway. All right, so I just want to, I'm going to run this one procedure that I've already written, hour hand move minute. So watch really carefully. An hour hand moving a minute. Is that going to be a lot or a little? Yeah, watch really carefully. I'm about to move the hour hand for a minute. And I, it did move, but you may not have seen it. It didn't move much. So just, um, just to illustrate, and this might give you a hint as to how to maybe write the rest of the program. I'm going to have the hour hand move 45 minutes on the clock. Let's, uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, just moved for a minute. Now it's going to move for 45 minutes. And it's going very slowly. All right, so this is one thing I, I, I probably should change. What's the default time for a tile to run in Alice? Michael? One second. one second, yeah. So I'm looping 45 times, calling the hour hand move minute. It's moving the hour hand, quote unquote, a minute on the, on the face of the clock. But it's taking 45 seconds to do it because by default, a tile takes 45 seconds to run. So just a suggestion that when you do write your hour hand move minute procedure, and I'm not going to go in here because I want you to think about how you would write this procedure. For the hour hand move minute procedure, you're going to have to divide by some other number. I'll let you think about how much you divide the full revolution by. But beyond that, you might want to set the duration so that the time that it takes for the hour hand to move a minute is much faster so that the hour hand moves more quick. 